Section 1 of Early Poems of Hart Crane by Hart Crane. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Early Poems of Hart Crane by Hart Crane. Annunciations. The anxious milk blood in the veins of the earth that strives long and quiet to sever the girth of greenery. Below the roots, a quickening shiver aroused by some light that had sensed, ere the shiver of the first moth's descent, day's predestiny. The sound of a dove's flight waved over the lawn, the moans of travail in one dearest beside me, then high cries from great chasms of chaos outdrawn, Hush! These things were all heard before dawn. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Bathers by Hart Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp Two ivory women by a milky sea the dawn, a shell's pale lining, restlessly shimmering over a black mountain spear. A dreamer might see these, and wake to hear. But there is no sound, not even a bird note. Only simple ripples flaunt and stroke and float, flat lily petals to the sea's white throat. They say that Venus shot through foam to light, but they are wrong. Ere man was given sight, she came in such still water, and so nursed in silence, beauty blessed and beauty cursed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Black Tambourine by Hart Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. The interests of a black man in a cellar mark tardy judgment on a world's closed door. Gnats toss in the shadow of a bottle, and a roach spans a crevice in the floor. Aesop, driven to pondering, found heaven with the tortoise and the hare, foxbrush and sow ear top his grave, and mingling incantations on the air. The black man, forlorn in the cellar, wanders in some mid-kingdom, dark, that lies between his tambourine, stuck on the wall, and in Africa, a carcass quick with flies. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. C-33 by Hart Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. He has woven rose vines about the empty heart of night and vented his long, mellowed wines of dreaming on the desert white with searing sophistry. And he tended with far truths he would form the transient bosoms from the thorny tree. O Materna! To enrich thy gold head and wavering shoulders with a new light shed from penitence must needs bring pain, and with it song of minor broken strain. But you who hear the lamp whisper through night can trace paths tear-wet and forget all blight. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Carmen de Bohème by Hart Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp Sinuously winding through the room On smoky tongues of sweetened cigarettes, Plaintive yet proud, the cello tones resume The andante of smooth hopes and lost regrets. Bright peacocks drink from flame-pots by the wall, just as absence-sipping women shiver through with simmering blue from the bowl in Circe's hall. 
their brown eyes blacken, and the blue drop hue. The Andante quivers with crescendo's start, and dies on fire's birth in each man's heart. The tapestry betrays a finger through the slit, soft pulling, and music follows cue. There is a sweep, a shattering, a choir disquieting of barbarous fantasy. The pulse is in the ears, the heart is higher, and stretches up through mortal eyes to see. Carmen, akimbo arms and smoldering eyes. Carmen, bestirring hope and lipping eyes. Carmen whirls and music swirls and dips. Carmen comes awed from wine-hot lips. Finale leaves in silence to replume bent wings, and Carmen with her flaunts through the gloom of whispering tapestry, brown with old fringe. The whiners leave too, and the small lamps twinge. Morning, and through the foggy city gate a gypsy wagon wiggles, striving straight. And some dream still of Carmen's mystic face, yellow, pallid, like ancient lace. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Carrier Letter by Hart Crane. Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. My hands have not touched water since your hands. No, nor my lips freed laughter since farewell. And with the day, distance again expands between us, voiceless as an uncoiled shell. Yet much follows, much endures. Trust birds alone. A dove's wings clung about my heart last night with surging gentleness, and the blue stone set in the tryst ring has but worn more bright. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Chaplinesque by Hart Crane. Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. We make our meek adjustments, contented with such random consolations as the wind deposits and slithered in two ample pockets. For we can still love the world, who find a famished kitten on the step, and no recesses for it from the fury of the street or warm, torn elbow coverts. We will sidestep, and to the final smirk, daily the doom of that inevitable thumb that slowly chafes its puckered index toward us, facing the dull squint with what innocence and what surprise. And yet these fine collapses are not lies, more than the pirouettes of any pliant cane. Our obsequies are in a way no enterprise. We can evade you and all else but the heart. What blame to us if the heart live on? The game enforces smirks. But we have seen the moon in lonely alleys make a grail of laughter of an empty ash can, and through all sound of gaiety and quest have heard a kitten in the wilderness. And the poem... This recording is in the public domain. Echoes by Hart Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp 1. Slivers of rain upon the pane, Jade green with sunlight, melt and flow upward again, they leave no stain of storm or strain an hour ago. 2. Over the hill a last cloud dips and disappears, and I should go silently now, but that your lips are warmer with a redder glow. 3. Fresh and fragile, your arms now are circles of cool roses, so... In opal pools beneath your brow I dream we quarreled long, long ago. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Fear by Hart Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp The host, he says that all is well, and the firewood glow is bright. The food has a warm and tempting smell, but on the window licks the night. Pile on the logs, give me your hands, friends. No, it is not fright. But hold me, somewhere I heard demands, and on the window licks the night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Forgetfulness by Hart Crane. Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. Forgetfulness is like a song that freed from beat and measure wanders. Forgetfulness is like a bird whose wings are reconciled, outspread and motionless, a bird that coasts the wind unwearingly. Forgetfulness is rain at night, or an old house in a forest, or a child. Forgetfulness is white, white as a blasted tree, and it may stun the sibyl into prophecy, or bury the gods. I can remember much forgetfulness. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Garden Abstract by Hart Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp The apple on its bough is her desire, shining suspension, mimic of the sun. The bough has caught her breath up, and her voice, dumbly articulate in the slant and rise of branch on branch above her, blurs her eyes. She is prisoner of the tree and its green fingers. And so she comes to dream herself the tree, the wind possessing her, weaving her young veins holding her to the sky and its quick blue, drowning the fever of her hands in sunlight. She has no memory, nor fear, nor hope, beyond the grass and shadows at her feet. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Great Western Plains by Hart Crane. Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. The little voices of the prairie dogs are tireless. They will give three hurrahs alike to stage, equestrian, and pullman, and all unstingingly as to the moon. And Fifi's bows and poodle ease whirl by them, centered on the lap of Lottie Honeydew, movie queen toward lawyers and Nevada. And see how much more they cannot see. Alas, there is so little time. The world moves by so fast these days. Burrowing in silk is not their way. And yet they know the tomahawk. Indeed, old memories come back to life. Pathetic yelps have sometimes greeted noses pressed against the glass. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Hive by Hart Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp Up the chasm walls of my bleeding heart Humanity pecks, claws, sobs, and climbs Up the inside and over every part of the hive of the world that is my heart and of all the sowing, and all the tear-tendering and reaping, have mercy and love issued forth, mercy, white milk, and honey, gold love. And I watch and say, these the anguish are worth. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Shadow by Hart Crane 
Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. Out in the late amber afternoon, confused among chrysanthemums, her parasol, a pale balloon, like a waiting moon in shadow swims. Her furtive lace and misty hair over the garden dial distill the sunlight, then withdrawing, wear again the shadows at her will. Gently, yet suddenly, the sheen of stars enwraps her parasol. She hears my step behind the green twilight, stiller than shadows, fall. Come, it is too late, too late to risk alone the light's decline, nor has the evening long to wait. But her own words are night's and mine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Interior by Hart Crane. Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. It sheds a sly solemnity, this lamp in our poor room. Oh, gray and gold amenity, silence and gentle gloom. Wide from the world, a stolen hour we claim, and none may know how love blooms like a tardy flower here in the day's afterglow. And even should the world break in with jealous threat and guile, the world at last must bow and win our pity and a smile. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Legend by Hart Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp The tossing loneliness of many nights rounds off my memory of her. Like a shell surrendered to evening sands, yet called adrift again at every dawn, she has become a pathos, waif of the tides. The sand and sea have had their way, and Moons of spring and autumn, all save I, and even my vision will be erased, as a cameo the waves claim again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lucison di Piero by Hart Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. One. Your eyes, those pools with soft rushes, O prodigal and holy dilatory lady, come now. When will they restore me the orient moon of my dapper affections? For imminent is that moment when, because of your perverse austerities, my crisp soul will be flooded by a languor bland as the wide gaze of a Newfoundland. Ah, oh, madame, truly it's not right when one isn't the real Gioconda to adaptate her methods and deportment for snaring the poor world in a blue funk. 2. Ah, the divine infatuation that I nurse for Cidalisa, now that she has fled the capture of my lunar sensibility. True, I nibble at despondencies among the flowers of her domain to the sole end of discovering what is her unique propensity. Which is to be mine, you say? Alas, you know how much I oppose a stiff denial to postures that seem too much impromptu. 3. Ah, without the moon, what white nights, what nightmares rich with ingenuity! Don't I see your white swans there? Doesn't someone come to turn the knob? And it's your fault that I'm this way, that my conscience sees double, and my heart fishes in troubled water for Eve, Gioconda, and Dahlia. Oh, by the infinite circumflex of the arch-beam of my cross-legged labors, come now, appease me just a little with a why and wherefore of your sex. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Modern Craft by Hart Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp Though I have touched her flesh of moons, Still she sits gestureless and mute, Drowning cool pearls in alcohol. O oh, blameless shyness, innocence dissolute! She hazards jet, wears tiger lilies, And bolts herself with a jeweled belt. Too many palms have grazed her shoulders, Surely she must have felt. Ophelia had such eyes, But she even sank in love and choked with flowers. This burns and is not burnt, my modern love were charred at a stake in younger times than ours. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Grandmother's Love Letters by Hart Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp there are no stars tonight but those of memory. Yet how much room for memory there is in the loose girdle of soft rain. There is even room enough for the letters of my mother's mother, Elizabeth, that have been pressed so long into a corner of the roof that they are brown and soft and liable to melt as snow. Over the greatness of such space Steps must be gentle. It is all hung by an invisible white hair. It trembles as birch limbs webbing the air. And I ask myself, Are your fingers long enough To play old keys that are but echoes? Is the silence strong enough To carry back the music to its source And back to you again, as though to her? Yet I would lead my grandmother by the hand through much of what she would not understand, and so I stumble, and the rain continues on the roof with such a sound of gently pitying laughter. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. October, November by Hart Crane. Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. Indian summer sun with crimson feathers whips away the mists, dives through the filter of trellises, and gilds the silver on the blotched arbor seats. Now gold and purple scintillate on trees that seem dancing in delirium. Then the moon in a mad orange flare floods the grape-hung night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Pastoral by Hart Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp No more violets and the year broken into smoky panels. What woods remember now her calls, her enthusiasms? That ritual of sap and leaves the sun drew out ends in this latter muffled bronze and brass. The wind takes rain. If, dusty, I bear an image beyond this already fallen harvest, I can only query, fool, have you remembered too long? Or was there too little said for ease or resolution, Summer scarcely begun, and violets, a few picked, the rest dead? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Persuasion by Hart Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp If she waits late at night, hearing the wind, it is to gather kindnesses no world can offer. She has drawn her hands away. The wind plays on Dante's of lost hopes and regrets, and yet is kind. Below the wind, waiting for morning, the hills lie curved and blent 
is now her heart and mind. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Porphyro in Akron by Hart Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp 1. Greeting the dawn, a shift of rubber workers presses down South Main. With a stubbornness of muddy water it dwindles at each crossed line until you feel the weight of many cars, northbound and east and west, absorbing and conveying weariness, rumbling over the hills. Akron, high place, a bunch of smoking hills among rolling Ohio hills. The dark-skinned Greeks grin at each other in the streets and alleys. The Greek grins and fights with the Swede, and the fjords and the Aegean are remembered. The plow, the sword, the trowel, and the monkey wrench. O oh, city, your axles need not the oil of song. I will whisper words to myself and put them in my pockets. I will go and pitch quoits with old men in the dust of a road. 2. And some of them will be Americans, using the latest icebox and buying Fords and others. I remember one Sunday noon, Harry and I, the gentlemen, seated around a table of raisin jack and wine, our host setting down a glass and saying, One month I go back rich. I ride black horse, have many sheep. And his wife, like a mountain, coming in with four tiny black-eyed girls around her, twinkling like little Christmas trees. And some Sunday fiddlers, Romanian businessmen, played ragtime and dances before the door, and we overpaid them because we felt like it. 3. Pull down the hotel counterpane and hitch yourself up to your book. Full on this casement shone the wintry moon, and threw warm gules on Madeline's fair breast, as down she knelt for heaven's grace and boon. Cune tu la paix. Your mother sang that in a stuffy parlor one summer day in a little town where you had started to grow, and you were outside as soon as you could get away from the company to find the only rose on the bush in the front yard. But look up, poor Figaro. Your toes are ridiculously tapping the spindles at the foot of the bed. The stars are drowned in a slow rain, and a hash of noises is slung up from the street. You ought really to try to sleep, even though in this town poetry is a bedroom occupation. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Potapovich of the Ballet Russe by Hart Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp Vault on the opal carpet of the sun, barbaric Prince Igor, or blind Piero, despair until the moon by tears be won, or Daphnis, move among the bees with Chloe. Release, dismiss the passion from your arms, more real than life, the gestures you have spun haunt the blank stage with lingering alarms, though silent as your sandals danced undone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Postscript by Hart Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. Though now but marble are the marble urns, though fountains droop in waning light, and pain glitters on the edges of wet ferns, I should not dare to let you in again. Mine is a world foregone, though not yet ended, an imagined garden gray with sundered boughs and broken branches, wistful and unmended, and mist that is more constant than your vows. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Praise for an Urn in Memoriam E.N. by Hart Crane. Read for LibriVox.org 
by Winston Tharp. It was a kind and northern face that mingled in such exile guise the everlasting eyes of Pierrot and of Gargantua, the laughter. His thoughts, delivered to me from the white coverlet and pillow, I see now were inheritances, delicate riders of the storm. The slant moon on the slanting hill once moved us toward presentiments of what the dead keep, living still, and such assessments of the soul as perched in the crematory lobby the insistent clock commented on, touching as well upon our praise of glories proper to the time. Still, having in mind gold hair, I cannot see that broken brow and miss the dry sound of bees stretching across a lucid space. Scatter these well-meant idioms into the smoky spring that fills the suburbs where they will be lost. They are no trophies of the sun. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Early Poems of Hart Crane by Hart Crane